Hi, this is Pam from the Birch Cottage blog. Today I'd like to show you how to sew a fabric face mask. You will need cotton fabric for your mask front and back, some ribbon, bias tape, or elastic for the drawstring, some cotton thread, scissors, some pens, a steam iron, and a sewing machine, of course. Before you begin, you will want to be sure to pre-wash, dry, and iron your fabric. Once that is done, you'll cut a 7 inch by 10 inch piece from your main fabric, which is your mask front, and a 7 inch by 10 inch piece, which is your mask back. And here is an outline of the next steps that we'll be taking, and I will also demonstrate that in the video. first thing you want to do is to press one long edge of the main fabric, about a quarter of an inch, and one long edge of the contrasting fabric, and then we're simply going to hem that uh, in place. We'll do that with the main fabric, and we'll do it also with the contrasting fabric. And then we're going to sew the mask front to the mask back. So lay the mask front face up, lay the mask back face down, match the hemmed edges, and then we're going to leave a three inch opening which is demonstrated here with the pins. I'm going to leave that as an opening. So I'll start from one of the pins and I'm going to do about a three eighths of an inch seam all the way around my mask back to the first pin. I will pivot at the corners and sew another 3 8 inch down the sides. And then pivot again and fold a 3 8 inch down the long edge, which is going to be the bottom of the mask. We want that opening to be in the top of the mask so we can insert a filter if we want to. And then again, when you get around back to that pin, you want to be sure to back stitch and reinforce those stitchings. And then we're just going to clip the corners and turn the fabric inside out. And remember, the opening is going to be the top of the mask. And then once you have the mask turned right side out, you can use a pointer, turner, crochet hook, the blunt end of scissors, whatever, to, to um, point out the corners. And then you want to press it flat. And then we're going to actually make the pleats in our mask. Starting at the top of the mask, I'll measure down about an inch and make a half inch pleat. I'll use one of my wonder clips to hold that in place. I'll do the same on the opposite edge, measure down about an inch make about a half inch pleat and pin that one in place. You wanna be sure that you're starting from the top of the mask, which is where that opening is, and measure down an inch to make your pleat. And you want your pleats to go down like you see here in the video. The reason for that is the pleats going down will deflect more germs and less likely to catch them in those little creases from the pleats. So again, you'll make the second pleat by measuring down about an inch and pinning that up about half an inch to make that pleat. You'll make three pleats in all. Once you have your pleats all pinned or clipped in place, you'll want to press those pleats so it'll be easier to sew. Once you have your pleats pressed, then you'll just do a 3 8 inch seam down each of the short sides, which will hold the pleats in place. So once you finish one side, just flip it around and sew the other place, the other edge in place uh, using a 3 8 inch
Be sure to trim off any loose threads and then you're ready to make the casing. To make the casing, you're just going to fold over each end about a half an inch. It just depends on what size elastic or ribbon that you're using. And I find it easier to actually insert the ribbon before I sew the side seam or the casing in place. So fit your um, ribbon in, fold over the edge of the mask, and then just sew very close to the edge of uh, the casing. And you want to back stitch when you begin and end that row. And then when I get to the end, I like to turn it around and sew another seam straight back down uh, that same stitch to kind of reinforce it. And then once you do a one side, you'll turn around and do the other side. And I do find it much easier to trim any threads as I go. So take the other end of your drawstring, your bias binding, whatever you're using, elastic, insert it, fold it over, and sew close to the edge. This will make a nice little casing for your drawstring to go through. And again, I just turn it around and go right back down that same stitching to reinforce that side seam where you'll be putting stress on those seams by tightening uh, the cords. And again, be sure to trim off any loose threads. And note that the looped part of the drawstring will be at the bottom of the mask and the ends that you tie will be at the top of the mask. You also have your pleats facing downward and the pocket for your filter at the top of the mask. Now, if you want to sew um, elastic in your mask, you can certainly do that instead of the drawstring. And I would insert it the same way. If you're using elastic, you'll want to be sure and use a zigzag stitch to secure the ends. And there you have two versions of the face mask, one with the drawstrings that you tie behind your head and one with the elastic that you slide over your head. And this is what the back of the mask look like. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like it below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and leave any comments or questions you have below.